wanna show you what I know. Break it free from the mainstream, the studio machine. I want it my way. Indie film nation. I want it my way. Indie film nation. Going all the way. Indie film nation. You know it's gotta be. Every day when I put on my gear and I become Mr. Extreme, I'm very afraid when I go out there on patrol. The shift that I might be working, it could very well be my last, my last shift. I mean, any of us can be shot, stabbed, rat packed, run over, and so forth. I have a picture of uh, Kitty Genovese on my uniform. Uh, for me, it's a constant reminder of why I've decided to live this lifestyle and take on the responsibilities that I have. Hi, this is Bruce Himmelblau with Indie Film Nation. We're here at Slam Dance talking to the director and one of the feature superheroes from the movie Superheroes. Michael, can you tell me about how you got the concept for this film? Uh, yeah, uh, about 16 months ago, I stumbled across um, this movement online, this massive online presence, and I brought it to our producer, Theodore James, and he thought it was unbelievable, and he had um, decided to go out and do a little research and see if there had been a film made about it, and there had not, which was also unbelievable. So we then uh, decided um, to start shooting, and, and we found Mr. Extreme down in San Diego and got in touch with him and immediately went down and shot him came home, looked at the footage, and found that it was pretty amazing. And continued from there and shot for the last year. We're actually still working on the film about six days ago. So just in time for the premiere here at Slamdance. Yeah, we finished about 48 hours before uh, our premiere here. And I know getting a documentary done and getting, getting the trust of the people who are participating in the doc is very difficult. And this, with the characters or the people in this film, it was, I can see even more challenges. Uh, yeah, it was probably uh, initially in the beginning our biggest challenge. Um, I think there's been a lot of local media. Um, I mean, these guys are nationwide. They're in every major city in America. And there's, there's a lot of local press about them. And the press tends to marginalize the movement. And I think they were very wary of that. So when we got in touch uh, initially, there was a, a, a huge amount of distrust. And um, I mean, Zimmer alone, when we first met him, he, we met him in a coffee shop and we talked to him for about an hour. And then he was like, great, I'm gonna go get the rest of my team, which is the New York Initiative in the film. And he never came back. And we were like, awesome, where'd he go? What's happening here? And uh, after about 45 minutes, the table next to us turned and said, we are the New York Initiative. And uh, we've been listening. We wanted to hear what you had to say. And we approve, we'll do the film. What did you hear that gave you the trust to do this film? Well, as a, as a journalist or anyone in the media, um, there, there are plenty of people that will tell you whatever you want to hear. And we didn't, I had never met Mike or TG before. I didn't know um, what to think of them. And so I heard good things uh, when they were you know, talking to me, but we also wanted to hear what they would say when I wasn't present. And so I went around the corner and waited for the all clear while Z and Saf were on the table next to them uh, just to see what they would say, see if they would say positive things or negative things. And uh, their intentions were totally pure. They had good intentions. They wanted to capture the real story and not marginalize or, um, or do anything underhanded. Um, and that came across in what they said. And they won over Z and Saf, who were really uh, suspicious people by nature. And one other question is, People are, are familiar with the superheroes from Marvel Comics and DC. You're not the superhero bitten by a spider or from another planet or anything like that. What gives you the power or what powers do you have 
to go out into the community to be a real-life superhero. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, my colleague uh, Z, now Zero, wrote a really good piece on this, and really his uh, philosophy is that the power is the choice. You have a choice to not be apathetic. You have a choice to really deeply connect and care about an issue. You have the choice to go out in your community and do something good or to just do your own thing and not care about other people. And so by making this choice to have altruistic intentions and to really do your best to do good by your fellow man and to do good by your community, that choice is the power that the real-life superhero community has harnessed, um, and they're changing the world with it. And have you been changed doing this film, going into it? Um, what were your expectations, and what was your final feelings when you finished the film? I think when we started, we thought we were going to make this sort of great piece of pop culture art because uh, this movement is so contemporary and it's so new and it, it, it sort of evolved out of the state of the nation, the state of the world, this need for uh, uh, change. But when we first started, we just thought, wow, look at these guys. They look awesome. And uh, we want to go shoot some crime. And, and ultimately, we got out there and we found something so much more profound and uh, I think ultimately what I learned about myself is uh, I'm not doing nearly enough to make the world a better place because these guys oftentimes don't have the resources to do what they do, and they, they find a way. So it's pretty impressive. And a little bit on the technical side, um, you shot this with the Canon 5D. What were the challenges of doing like a run and gun? Because there is some action in this film where you need to get the activity quickly. Uh, I think if you ask my producer, he'll say it was the hugest hurdle for this film. But for me, I, I like shooting on this camera. I've been a cinematographer for a long time. I think it's a, it's a fascinating development in technology where you can... I mean, we shot the whole film on prime lenses, basically. Um, so, yeah, in the middle of the action, I'd be like, all right, lens change. <laughs> and uh, But ultimately, uh, we started shooting this film right when the 5D came out. It, it, the, cam the camera was like 60 days old. And it was a 30p camera. It didn't even have a 24p update yet. And um, there was no actual like third-party support for the camera yet. So we totally designed it. You know, I built this uh, sort of suspension rig, and uh, and I worked with Nebtech to sort of develop some like extra support. And um, I'm very pleased. I think it's a really cinematic camera, and I think the film is uh, it's the next step in how docs can look and how cinematic they can be. Yeah, one thing that I was surprised for seeing this for the first time was seeing Stan Lee. I'm a big fan, and how did you find him, and, and how did that help the film? Uh, we got in touch with Stan's people very early on, um, and it took a couple of months, I think, to get them to agree to, to um, be a part of it. He's a pretty busy guy. Uh, but we chose to get him on board as soon as possible because of the huge level of mistrust within this community regarding media, and we were we were just media at the time. Uh, so once we got him on board, it certainly helped every time we approached them to be, Stan Lee's in the film. If you want to be part of it, cool. But we got Stan Lee. So, uh, it, yeah, and he's, uh, we're so, you know, happy that he decided to cooperate. He's a great presence in the film, and he's he's certainly the, the most iconic voice in, in uh, uh, comic books in the superhero world. And Zimmer, um, with his Real Life Superheroes, I know the New York Initiative is growing. How does this compare to other more traditional uh, groups? I think the Guardian Angels have a really good approach in that they don't carry any kind of body armor or weaponry on patrol for this purpose of not seeming like a threat. You don't want to seem like an invading force into some community. And I really like that philosophy, and they, they stand by it. Uh, and so when I started out, that's, uh, that's how I approached it. Um, so all of our stuff is um, hidden. We don't go out in costume. Uh, the masks are only for interviews to maintain secret identities. When we're out in the field, um, it's, it's plain clothes. Uh, all of our armor is hidden. Uh, all of our uh, non-lethal weaponry is hidden. Uh, and we've gone over and over and over laws um, just to make sure we're, we're not do doing any shortcuts or making any mistakes. And is there a future project to follow up to this? Uh, I, I'm constantly working. I just uh, I just did a project for Warner Brothers. I shot a commercial last week. Uh, I have another project coming up for MySpace, you know, next week, and then I'm in post on three other projects. Super super busy. Uh, yeah, I've, you know, we've been doing this for a long time, our team, so we stay real busy. And what is next on your plate? 
next on our plate is the, the New York Initiative. The team that I'm on has grown. Uh, it's gotten so huge. It's tripled in size since, um, since say, like when this documentary was first being shot. And that's even before the documentary has come out. Um, people are excited about joining uh, the New York Initiative. So uh, it's, it's getting to where we can work with a larger team uh, and hopefully take on some larger projects in New York. Uh, there's, there's so much in that city that's, that's wrong or could be done better. And hopefully we can make a dent in those things. Well, thank you for both much. And for more information, where can they find this film? Uh, you can go to superheroesthemovie.com. And uh, we literally just finished, so we'll have a much clearer idea um, of distribution. We've had some nice offers here at the festival, so we're, we're mulling our options. And, and uh, hopefully very shortly here, we'll know what the uh, life of this movie is going to be. Well, thank you for the, for the time. This is Bruce Himmelblau for Indie Film Nation. Master Legend is very psychic. I just go ahead and say it. I have super speed, high endurance, sight beyond sight, healing powers, superhuman strength. He's never been wrong about anything he's ever predicted. A few years ago, there was a boy who uh, I thought was my son, believe it or not, a 19-year-old son from up north of here. And Master Legend knew before anybody else did, nope, he's not your son. Sure enough, that turned out to be right. We're going to go onward to the Justice Van. <laughs> oh, I love jumping in front of cars, huh?